Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. Good evening, everyone. A fire which destroyed a Berrydale unit causing around $300,000 worth of damage is being treated as suspicious. Neighbours attempted to extinguish the blaze, but the home was unable to be saved. The contents of this Berrydale unit turned to ash. The Tasmanian Fire Service called to the property overnight. 12.05am uh, this morning, um, a resident at Berrydale noticed a, a unit on fire in my uh, court. Um, as a result of that fire, uh, the unit was destroyed and there was also some minor smoke damage to the unit next door. Those in surrounding properties jumping to action. Yeah, my understanding, uh, quite a few people tried to put the fire out. Um, people that first saw it um, and also the neighbour next door. No one was actually injured, I understand, which is a good thing, but yeah, unfortunately couldn't be saved. The damage to the neighbouring property estimated at around $15,000, but police say the situation could have been a lot worse. Very lucky. I mean, fires can spread very, very quickly, especially in a um, close density units like that. So the fact that it was probably found quickly um, and, and fire brigade called quickly has obviously helped put it under control. The properties are managed by Mission Australia, who say they're working alongside affected tenants to ensure they have safe and secure accommodation. The circumstances surrounding the cause of the fire are still being investigated. Police are urging anyone with information to contact Crime Stoppers. Meg Sides, 7 Tasmania News. The body of a 60-year-old man who was swept off the rocks while fishing near Tribunner yesterday afternoon has been found. Locals assisted police with the search on Bolton's Beach. The man was located in the water two hours after disappearing. Whenever we lose a life, it's a tragic event. Um, not only for the family, for the friends, for the people who have to turn up. Unfortunately, we deal with it a lot and it's, it's never easy to deal with. Police are reminding people to take care while fishing off rocks. Access to the east coast community of Spring Beach has been restored after the bridge connecting the area to Orford washed away in heavy rain Thursday afternoon, stranding around 100 people. A new temporary bridge has been installed while preparations for a permanent structure are underway. TT Line has begun accepting bookings for Spirit of Tasmania passengers from COVID safe states. The company says those travelling from South Australia, Western Australia, the Northern Territory, Queensland and the ACT can now book trips scheduled to depart from October 26. Those transiting through Victoria to board the ferry and only stopping for fuel will not need to seek approval to enter the state. Prior to October 26, the Spirit will only accept Tasmanian residents, essential travellers and freight operators. A long-lost locket has been returned to a Lilydale family after spending decades in the dirt. The World War II gold medallion was found by a civil contractor and with the help of social media is now back in the hands of the Arnolds. A precious pendant locked with history and memories back where it belongs, all thanks to the determination of Dion Jacobs. Well, I was back filling a trench after putting the new water main through here on Station Road and... Um, Kirk Seymour, my offsider, um, was in the excavator and I said to him, whoa, whoa, <laughs> I saw something there and I thought it was a little old button. But it was far more than that. It was a World War II RAAF medallion sent from Geoffrey to his mother. And starting on the back, it, it says, Dear Mother, with love, from Jeff, 10-5-1942. Dion felt compelled to dig deeper. I thought to myself, well, this has to go back to the family. Uh, so I put a couple of posts up on Facebook, the phone calls and everyone that had actually put in their two bobs worth to help. It was fantastic. I was blown away by all the help and support. Today, the long lost locket was handed over to Geoffrey's cousin and niece. Really good, but my daughter loves it. <laughs> and it's wonderful how the, the interest that, uh, that having it on Facebook has generated. Geoffrey Arnold served in World War II with the Royal Australian Air Force before returning to Tasmania. He was discharged in 1944 and that he had shrapnel wounds. And uh, he was never quite the same uh, after that. Sadly, he died in 1959. The family is thankful a part of him will live on through this treasured keepsake. It's just a great feeling that now it's finally back with the family after being lost for so long. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmanian News. 
Today is World Pickleball Day, but don't worry if you haven't heard of the sport, you're not alone. It's still a new game in Tasmania, but fans say it's here to stay. A new sporting craze has landed in Tasmania. Pickleball is a hybrid game that uses a badminton sized court. Um, it has a tennis net and you have these paddles like table tennis. The game was invented in the US and its unique name comes with an even more unique story. It's because one of the families had a dog called Pickle and he would run away with the ball so that's how it got its name, Pickleball. Still new to Tasmania, organisers say the sport is perfect for people of all ages and abilities. We do find we get a lot of um, people who, who come from um, tennis, they come along and play and they love it and they, and they stay. Don Ryan is one of those people, introduced to the sport for the first time yesterday. I happened to have the day off and I thought, I'm a, I, I still play tennis and I thought I'll go and give it a go. Today celebrating the first World Pickleball Day, players say it's a great opportunity to get more people involved. And to raise awareness about this strange sport that people have never really heard of, but so many people are getting behind. Looking forward to celebrating many more to come. Meg Sides, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanians have rallied in support of the critically endangered swift parrot. Locals met at Hobart's Parliament lawns calling for urgent action to protect the species. The people here today are showing the very passion that uh, spills out for the swift parrot, the most gorgeous, most fast parrot on the planet, and people here are determined to do everything they can to save it. Five years since the swift parrot has been listed as critically endangered. It's been five years without action from the government. It's been five years without protection of the swift parrot's habitat. The state government says it's protecting almost 10,000 hectares of swift parrot nesting habitat from wood production in southern forests. To the TSL now, which will have an all-northern grand final for the first time since 2014 after both, after both Launceston sides won their semi-finals. At Utah's stadium, 14 goals to one after quarter time saw North Launceston thrash Clarence, while at Windsor Park, Launceston held off a third quarter charge from Lauderdale to win. Win or go home. It was a simple equation in this year's TSL semi-finals. The Southern Bombers started strongly, kicking two of the first three goals. Lauderdale leading at quarter time, but Launceston kicked two vital goals against a win. Two quick majors early in the second quarter gave the Blues the lead, while Jay Blackberry pulled a rabbit out of the hat. What a tremendous goal! The home side taking maximum advantage of the wind. An eight goal to nothing second quarter blitzing the Bombers. The Blues 47 points up at the main break. However, the game was far from over. A five goal to one third turn from Lauderdale slashing the margin to just 23 points with a quarter left. Joe Gronwegen steadied the nerves early in the final term. The Blues snuffing out any miracle. Six goals to two giving them a spot in their first grand final since 2012. At Utah Stadium, Clarence were heavy underdogs against a reigning premier. The Roos starting strong. Two goals to one giving them a seven point lead at the first change. North Launceston fighting back in the second. Their midfield getting on top as they race to a 14 point lead at half time. They took control in the third, suffocating the Clarence midfield and getting on top around the contest. Three goals to none gave them a 33-point lead with a quarter to play. That dominance continuing in the final quarter. Seven goals to nothing giving them a spot in the decider for the seventh year in a row. Clarence failing to kick a goal after half-time. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. And Launceston are also through to the TSLW Grand Final, defeating arch-rival North Launceston at Windsor Park. Brooke Brown showed why North Melbourne selected her in this week's AFLW draft, scoring five first-half goals as the Blues, Blues led by 34 points at half-time. De that deficit too much for the Northern Bombers to overcome as Launceston cruised to a 43-point win. They'll meet Glenorchy in the grand final, who came from behind to defeat Clarence. Clarence led at the first three changes, but the Magpies kicked two goals to one in the final quarter to snatch a spot in the decider. 
The Bernie Dockers has won its third Northwest Football League Premiership in a row, defeating Devonport by 39 points in today's grand final. A five goal to one second quarter gave the Dockers a 19 point lead at half time. Devonport fighting back in the third, reducing the margin to 14 points with a quarter to play. But Bernie stormed home in the final term, kicking three goals and keeping the Magpies goalless on their way to an 82 point to 43 point win. Meanwhile, Hewenville will face Signet in next week's SFL Grand Final after defeating Lindisfarne by 19 points in the preliminary final. In greasy conditions, Lindisfarne got the jump on the home side, leading by 16 points at quarter time. The Lions fighting back in the second. A five-goal one-term saw them lead by 12 at the main change. Lindisfarne regained the lead by three-quarter time, but Hewenville dominated the final term to win through to the decider. In the Sheffield Shield, it's been a tough day for Tasmania, with Queensland dominating day one in Adelaide. The Tigers were reduced to two for 18 early on, Michael Nessa removing Jordan Silk and Charlie Wakeham in the space of four balls. A Ben McDermott half-century steadying the ship before he fell for 74 near T. McDermott into the covers and he's out just before T. Kawaja with the great catch... Aussie Test captain Tim Payne made just four as Tasmania slumped to seven for 149. A half century from Bo Webster helping them pass 200 before he fell to a spectacular catch with the Tigers all out for 250 late in the day. Welcome back. 16 degrees today in Hobart. Launceston had the state's top with 19 with 18 degrees in Burnie and Devonport. Cressy, Wynyard and St Helens all 18 degrees. 17 for Scottsdale and Fingal. 16 degrees for Campania, Ouse and on Flinders Island. 15 the top for Lowhead, Grove and Strawn. The low and an associated rain band remain off the southeast coast of the state. Low cloud lies over the west. Further out, frontal bands lie over the Tasman, just west of Tasmania and southwest of WA, with mostly cloud free conditions around the remainder. Tomorrow shows a high pressure system over the southeastern region, extending ridges over New South Wales and central parts. Inland troughs lie over Queensland and WA. West to southwesterly winds 15 to 25 knots, decreasing 10 to 15 early on, tending west to northwesterly in the afternoon, variable about the east, with seas between 1 and 2 metres. There's a few warnings, a moderate flood warning for the Macquarie River and a minor flood warning for the Jordan, South Esk, North Esk, Cole, Hewan and Meander Rivers. On to the forecast, 16 degrees tomorrow in Hobart and Ouse, 17 and cloudy in Richmond, 18 in Launceston, 16 for Devonport and Deloraine, cloudy conditions there. 16 in Burnie, showers for Strawn 15 and 15 also at Curry, with a few clouds in the east, 16 degrees for St Helens, Swansea and Whitemark. Showers developing in the west and the south on Monday afternoon, extending across the north and central areas later. Showers contracting to the north on Tuesday, with some showers again in the north on Wednesday, extending to the east later. Taking a look now at your major cities, a sunny 24 in Perth tomorrow, 23 degrees in Adelaide, 17 for Melbourne, sunny and 26 in Sydney, with 28 the top for Brisbane. And a few clouds about this evening, 14 degrees in Hobart and Devonport and clear night and 15 in Launceston. Back to you, Lou. Lovely. Thanks, Sam. And that's all your news for this Saturday evening. Thanks, as always, for joining us. Have a lovely evening. Good night.